How about a nice buke? Hey there, this is Admish, and today I'm gonna talk to you about a selection gradient. I know that doesn't sound so catchy, uh, that, uh, okay. I know that doesn't sound so catchy, but here's the thing. You can never imagine, you would never have imagined the kind of things that you can do with it. The kind of uses that it will have. Now, you have applied filters in Photoshop, right? And you have also used the gradient tool. What does the good old gradient tool do? It applies colors in a gradient. It also helps you make masks. So let me show you. Suppose you have the gradient tool selected. You have a nice gradient selected. You can choose the colors that you want and you can have a nice gradient between two colors. But what if you want to apply a filter in a gradient? What if you want to apply an effect in a gradient? What if you want to apply an adjustment layer in a gradient? What do you do? now? Before knowing this tutorial, before knowing about this tutorial, okay, so how did you apply filters to specific areas? You selected those areas, right? But you know, when you select a particular areas, the edges are hard. And even if you feather the edges, that's not like, not at all like a gradient tool. Now, in this video, I have got three amazing examples, not six, three amazing examples for you where you might use this feature in real time life, in a real life. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and the first step is to learn what the tool is all about. What am I talking about? So let's learn that now. If you make a regular selection about the elliptical tool or any regular selection by the polygon tool, the edges are hard. And if you fill color in these areas, it's just simple, as simple as that. It's just a flat color in the particular area. But what if you want to have a selection just like a gradient, just like a gradient would normally do? Now, I will go slow, so follow carefully. So the first step is to make a gradient from black to transparent okay not black to white black to transparent so select the gradient tool go right here i've already made that brush so let's make it again so select any select the first one so you would have black to white right here so what do you do now double click on this and select black click okay now here we have gray so we need to remove that color to remove that color the the sliders in the bottom are about colors and the sliders above are about location and opacity so don't get confused okay the sliders in the bottom are about colors now we want to remove color from here and we want to make it transparent so just drag it outside and it's gone now it's all black we need to make it transparent. To make it transparent, we need to set the opacity to zero. The more the number of opacity, the more opaque the color is. The lesser the number, the more transparent it is. So click on this and set the opacity to zero. Okay, now it is black to transparent. Click OK. Now what you gotta do? Press the magic button. Listen to this carefully. Press Q. Okay, this opens up the quick mask tool. Now go ahead and draw gradients, okay? You can add gradients as much as you want. Now here's the thing. You could have selected from black to white. Okay, let's go, go double click and let's add a color called white. And let's set the opacity to 100. Now if you would have selected black to white, what would have happened is that, okay, this is a nice gradient, but what if you want to add to it? You cannot add to it. Let's try adding to this. No, it just vanishes away. So that's why we chose black to transparent. So let's go ahead. This is black and we need to make it transparent. So remove the color and set the opacity to zero. Done. Click OK. So let's add as many as you want. This can also be used to create a vignette in your images. Okay. Then, when you're done, press Q. This makes a really nice selection of the corners. But watch what happens. This is very crucial. Watch what happens. What if you want to have the vignette a darker color, say black? So let's create a new layer. And to create a new layer, you need to click right here. Creates a new layer. And we need to fill the selection with black. So make sure 
click here make sure black is selected click ok and to fill any selection with color there's a shortcut alt and backspace if you're using a mac it's option backspace okay but what just happened the opposite happened i didn't want the color to fill the inside of it of the selection i wanted the color to select the outside of the selection to fill the outside of the selection so here is the crucial step. Let's go back just a little bit. Once your selection is done, you need to keep in mind that the red areas are the areas that are not selected. They're not the areas that are selected. The red areas are the areas that are not selected. So when you have your selection appearing after pressing Q, your running ants when they appear, it means that instead of the red areas except the red areas every area is selected now how do i invert the selection how do i make the selection opposite you just have to press a uh, press a shortcut called Control shift i and it just inverts the selection also what you can do is that you can also do it through the menu you can go to select inverse okay it shows you the shortcut shift control i or if you're using a mac then it's shift command i okay now when you press alt backspace it fills the corners you can always go ahead decrease the opacity see the opacity slider is here decrease the opacity to the amount that you like and you have a nice vignette now how would you use this in practical real world Okay, so I have three examples for you as I promised. Now, the first example. What if I want to add a little bit of light leak from the side? What do I do? Make a selection, create a gradient first. Now, let's create a new layer. That's the first thing that we want to do. Then make sure the gradient tool is selected. Black to transparent is selected. Then let's make a gradient, okay? But I just forgot a step press Q okay Q Q for quack okay now let's create a gradient you can always add to the gradient if you like no this is not good yes to go back control alt Z if you're using a PC or command option Z if you're using a Mac okay uh, this much is fine I guess all right so this is good now press Q what was the next step? Control Shift I. If you're using a Mac, Command Shift I to invert the selection. Now, let's create a curves adjustment layer. So, click on this adjustment layer icon. Okay, this is the adjustment layer icon and select curves. And let's increase the brightness. Now, that's a light leak. Now, what if you want to make it a little bit yellowish? I would go to red increase the reds just a little bit okay and decrease the blues just a little bit like see yellowish yep yo so this is before this is after so that's how you you can always go ahead and decrease the opacity if you want okay so this is before after before after so that's how many people add colored vignettes colored you know light leaks in instagrams that's how you can basically do it in photoshop the difference is you have full control of what color you want the vignette or the light leak off and you can control a whole lot of stuff like opacity and things like that. That's why I encourage people to edit your photos in Photoshop or Lightroom instead of just doing it in Instagram because in Instagram the output is of not high resolution especially for commercial purposes and even for non-commercial purposes you want to have the quality of the image set to a particular value so that you can pixel peep it and show it to a client and show it to someone and they would be like wow and now I'm sidetracked let's move on to the next example in this example what if you want to apply an effect or a filter in the sides so let's do the same steps make sure we need to create a new layer in this also why because it's always good to not touch the original file never touch the original file okay but in but this time what we will do we will make a duplicate of this layer okay so to make a duplicate you can press ctrl j if you're using a mac it's command j 
Also what you can do, you can drag it and drop it right here. It makes a duplicate because we want to apply a filter this time. This is not an overlay light flare like the previous example. This is a filter in the image. So we want to have a duplicate of it. Now let's follow the same procedure. So make sure the gradient tool is selected. Then press Q. Opens up the quick mask tool. Now quick masks window, quick mask mode, quick mask mode. Let me check what it's called. It's called, it, it'll show right up here. Quick mask mode, okay? I'm sorry, I'm very bad with nomenclatures and stuff, okay? So, if I drag it right here, good. I, I can add it as much as I want. Okay? Great, awesome. Now, press Q again. Now what you gotta do? Now, Control shift i If you're using a Mac, Command shift i See, here's the thing. Uh, in Mac, Control is Command. Alt is option and that's all you have to remember. All the shortcuts are same. Just render control as command, alt is option. If somebody says option and if somebody else is doing a tutorial in Mac, if he or she says, says, says option, that means it's alt. If he or she says command, it means control and shift is all the same. So what I don't know what's happening with my tongue today. So to apply a filter, I would go to filter. Then filter gallery. So apply the filter that you like and it's processing right now. So let's zoom out. See, see how it's applying filter just at the corners. It's giving it a very nice effect. So fresco, rough pastels, just in the corners. See how beautiful the watercolor, right? You can have very nice effects. You can add texture, you can stylize it if you want. You can make it a sketch-like thing right in the corners. You can distort it if you want. You can have, and you know, you can play with it if you, just play with it, okay? So suppose I am in love with this filter. So I would go, okay, I like this. You can tweak the values and you can go, okay. Now, as you can see, the filter is just applied in the corners. Now, why did we make a duplicate layer? So that we have a safe background layer. So we can turn that off and look at the before and after. And if we do something wrong with this image, if the filter went all wrong, you can always go back, delete it and do that all over again. Now, here's another tip. Let's go back. Okay, let's go back. Let's delete it. Now, before you apply filter, if you go to filter, and if you click on this convert for smart filters, watch what happens. Okay, nothing happens. But watch, now when I apply filters, now when I go to filter, filter gallery, and now when I apply the same filter, angle strokes, click OK, let it apply the filter. It will take a little more time. But at this time, you can just turn off and on the filters. How amazing is that? Besides, what you can do, you can double click on the filter gallery and you can tweak the values. You can just tweak the values and you can go back, click OK and it's done. You don't have to do it all over again. Isn't that beautiful? Now, oh, ah, let's move on to the third example, okay? I'm just trying to make this video without any cuts and I just hope that it happens. Okay, now, so this is an amazing portrait and all we want in this is a nice bokeh. We want the ears to be blurred and eyes to be tack sharp. So how do we do that? We do that using the same steps, though there are a lot of ways of doing it, but I'm gonna demonstrate how you can do that using these simple steps, selection, gradient. So make sure the selection gradient is selected, okay? Let's make a copy of this layer so that we don't damage the original one. Now press Q, done. Now keep on adding, let's zoom in. Okay, now keep on adding from the corner of his head, to his forehead. So let's add right here. Pretty good. From his ear to his eye. Nice. Make sure the lines of gradients that you make is perpendicular to the edges. So suppose the edge is like this. So gradient should be should go like this. Okay. It shouldn't be like this or this. It should go like this. So watch here. 
See this line? Okay, I hope you can see my cursor. See this line? So we want to make a line perpendicular to it. Okay, perpendicular. And where would we end? We would end where his cheek starts. Okay, good. Now here too. Here we would end a little early. Why? Because the chin suddenly starts above the neck. Okay, the same here. You don't worry too much because you can always go ahead and clean it up later. Okay, perpendicular, make sure it is. Cheek, ear to the eye, to the forehead. Pretty good selection. Now, what do we do next? Press Q. Next step, Control Shift I. Command Shift I if you're using a Mac. Go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Keep the amount that you like. I think 8 is fine, but you can increase and decrease it. But don't go way too overboard like this. It looks like a ghost, okay? Don't do that. 8, 7 is fine. And depending upon the resolution of your image, it might be higher, it might be lower. If the resolution of the image is too high, okay, you might go a little bit to the right. If the resolution of image is smaller, you might go a little bit to the left. But it all depends upon your artistic perspective. All right. For me, a 9 or 8 works. I'll click OK. Now, to deselect, all you need to do, you need to press Ctrl D if you're using a Windows, Command D if you're using a Mac. Now, let's look at the before and after. So, this is the before, this is the after. Pretty nice bokeh! Now, <laughs> what do you gotta do? If you think this is a pretty bad selection and it shouldn't have gone so much blurry right beneath the chin. You can always clean that up. That is why in the first place we created a duplicate layer for. Now so that we can remove this area from the layer above in which we have applied the blur and the original layer will show through. To do that, make sure this layer is selected. Don't worry if you don't understand it, okay? Just, just follow the steps. Make sure the above layer is selected, okay? Now, Create a mask. To create a mask, click on this tiny button, the one with a rectangle and a circle inside it. Click on it. Now take a brush, make sure that black is selected. Now as you can see, black is the background color and the foreground color is white. What if you want to instantly get black instead of just clicking and selecting? What if you want to instantly have black in the foreground color? Press the shortcut X and just background and the foreground color just swaps. Okay, now you simply uh, decrease the flow to 10, I've already done it, opacity 100, and start painting where you want a little bit of sharpness. Okay, you want a sharpness here, sharpness here, pretty good, decent, isn't it? Now, now it looks amazing, let's zoom out. So this is the before, this is the after. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, suggestions, feedback, any grudges, please leave them down in the comments below. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. And yes, yes, how could I forget that? If you like the video, like it. If you dislike the video, don't do anything. Please just ignore it. And if you like the video so very much, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And bye bye. Peace. Keep creating. If you're wondering why am I wearing this pen right now, it's because of two reasons. I just returned from college and the last lecture was really exhausting. Don't tell anybody, okay? And the second reason is this pen was gifted by my very good friend Somajit on my birthday. Why didn't you? Okay. And as a big shout out to my friend, I'm going to end this video with his clip, which I captured way before I started making YouTube videos. So here he is, the man in action. Just ignore the horn. Share, kare, bear, kare, kuch bhi kare. <laughs> <laughs> As.